بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله نبدا باذن الله تعالى في هذا اليوم اسال الله سبحانه وتعالى لي ولجميع التوفيق والسداد بدراسه كتاب منهج السالكين وتوضيح الفقه للشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن بن ناصر بن سعد رحمه الله تعالى، نعم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين، والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. ما بعد، we're going to start today um, in a series of lessons covering the book منهج السالكين وتوضيح الفقه في الدين. This book was authored by a scholar called Sheikh Abdul Rahman بن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله. لماذا ندرس الفقه؟ لو قال لنا قائل لماذا ندرس الفقه؟ نعم. Why should we study fiqh? Somebody wants to ask us why should we study fiqh? Why do you study fiqh? لأن العبادة لا تقبل إلا بالإخلاص والمتابعة لهدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. الإخلاص ولهذا ندرس التوحيد والمتابعة لهدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولهذا ندرس الفقه. نعم. Because an act of worship is not accepted by Allah except with two conditions. The first condition is al-ikhlas, and the second condition is mutaba, following the son of the Prophet So when we say al-ikhlas, sincerity, then this is in studying aqeedah and tawheed. When we say al-mutaba, following the son of the Prophet for this reason we study fiqh. عَلَى مَاذَا يَحْتَوِي الْفِقْحِ يعني ندرس الفقه ما هي الأبواب التي يسمى ندرسها بإذن الله تعالى so the subject area of fiqh, what does it include? Which subjects do we cover and study when we talk about studying fiqh? So fiqh, the study of fiqh is divided into two categories. Ibadat ummaamalat. Al ibadat, which is the fiqh of the worship of Allah, the acts of worship, and then the other subject area is muamalat, i.e. those transactions that we do. صفة مع المعاملة تلحق بها شيء لا أشكر بهذا نعم المعاملة سوف يلحق بها شيء ولا أشكر بهذا التقسيم عبادات ومعاملة نعم so again both these two types there's عبادات which is worship and معاملات which are transactions العبادات أركان الإسلام ونضيف الأركان الإسلام كتاب الجهاد نعم and therefore and ibadat are the five the pillars of an Islam, and also with the pillars of an Islam is the chapter of jihad. يعني أبدأ بإذن الله تعالى لأركان الإسلام شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله ومحمد عبد رسوله ثم في هذا شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله سنذكر كتاب الطهارة لأنه لا بد من طهارة الباطل قبل طهارة ولا بد للصلاة من مفتاح مفتاح الصلاة الطهارة ثم بعد هذا نعم. So we begin first in the five pillars of Islam by studying شهادة لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله. And this is because and in this is الطهارة أي purification. So before we have the physical type of purification, we have to have the spiritual type of purification. And the prayer it has its key. And the key for the prayer is a tahara, purification. So now if a person has purified himself, then the next thing he does is he prays. And therefore we come to the book of a salah prayer. And then from amongst the prayers, Allah's prayer which are an obligation, salaid, and there are also other prayers which are voluntary. And then the fuqaha, rahimahullah, they mention after the book of prayer, the book of salah, they mention the book of jina'is, the book of funerals, because the most that person benefits after his death, is when people pray over him. 
then after this, the chapter of Az-Zakah, Sunnah Al-Siyam, and then the chapter of fasting, Sunnah Al-Hajj, and then the chapter of Al-Hajj pilgrimage, Sunnah Al-Jihad. And then after this, the chapter of Al-Jihad. And then, Nabda Al-An, the Kitab al So therefore, we want to begin now with the chapter of purification. Nabda Al-An, and the Tahar, and Qasim, and Al-Qasim. We have to know that purification it is of two types. Tahar. Spiritual purification and physical purification. So the most important type of purification is the spiritual purification, meaning a person purifies himself from a shirk. Therefore, a person has to see, uh, purify his religion for the sake of Allah. And to sing it out to Allah with the three types of Tawheed. And also that a person frees himself and disassociates from a ship and also the people of ship. Therefore, any action, any act of worship is not accepted without Islam. If a person has something with him from the aspects of a ship, then nothing is accepted from him in terms of worship. من الطهارة من أقسام الطهارة التي ذكرنا الطهارة المعنوية إنما المشركون نجس نعم. So the most important aspect of purification that a person must have is the spiritual purification. So Allah said in the Quran, indeed the مشركون the people of الشرك are impure. أرجو مسجون مقيد بالسلاسل لا يستطيع أن يستقبل القبلة ولا يستطيع أن يتطهر. If a person was in jail, in prison, and he was chained, and he wasn't able to purify himself in terms of making wudu, and he wasn't able to face the qibla, and he wasn't able to cover his aura, and then he prayed in his state, then his prayer would be accepted, totally his prayer would be accepted. But if you have a situation of another person, and this person, he faces the qibla, and he purifies himself in terms of making wudu, and he covers his aura, but he prays, and he, he's, he, he's falling into a shirk al akbar then none of his prayer is accepted. إذا يبدأ الفقهاء رحمهم الله تعالى في كتب الفقه بكتاب الطهارة. نعم. So because of this, the fuqaha, may Allah bless you from them, they start their books of fiqh by mentioning the chapter of al-tahara purification. لماذا؟ Why? أرادوا طهارة الباطن قبل طهارة الظاهر. Because first they want to cover or study purification of that which is inside and hidden before the purification of that which is apparent. And because of tahara purification, it is the key to the prayer. And therefore it comes before the prayer. So if it comes before the prayer, then also in terms of studying fiqh, uh, then we study Tahara before we study the prayer. So Tahara to Qasim in a Qasmin. Tahara Ma'awiya. So then we had the Tahara of Salah Abu Salah al Shirk. And then we have Tahara al Hissim. And therefore, a Tahara purification it is of two types. A Tahara Ma'awiya, the spiritual form of purification. And the opposite to this is a Shirk. And we ask Allah for safety and pardoning. And then the physical type of purification. Now, 
terms of physical purification, then this is all two times. A person purifying himself from major impurity, and this is done through forming ghusl, and a person purifying himself from minor impurity, and this is by making wudu. And then we also have purification in terms of a person's body, the place and clothes. So purification, purifying a person, a person purifying his body in terms of the impurities that touch his body. A person purifying the place that he's in praying in, that he's praying in from impurities. And also a person purifying or cleaning his clothes that he prays in. So once again, physical purification is either purification from major form of impurity or minor form of impurity, or a person purifying the place that he is trained in, or his body, or his clothes from any impurities. So the main thing or the first thing that you use in order to purify yourselves with is water. This is the base of a tahar physical purification. If a person cannot find water in order to purify himself with, then he goes on to purifying himself with a Torah, which is soil or sand. So, purification, physical purification of Tahara is done through water, and this is the main uh, origin. And if a person cannot find water, then purification is done through a Torah, which is soil. And there are two types of water, that which is pure and that which is impure. So the water, so the water which is pure, then this is the water which is which remains upon its original state, whether it's water which has come down from the sky, or water which is uh, gushing forth from the earth. If this water now changes because of an impurity which affects and influences the water, so for example, the water changes because of this impurity. In terms of its taste, its taste changes because of the impurity mixed in it, or its smell changes because of the impurity mixed in it, or its color changes because of the impurity that's mixed in it. And this water now goes from being pure to being impure. We have, to care, we have to be careful about when we're using a small amount of water in terms of its purity or impurity more than we care about large amounts of water. So when we have a small amount of water, we have to make sure that its taste hasn't changed and its color hasn't changed and its smell hasn't changed due to any impurity mixed in it. Yeah. So the Fuqaha, the scholars of Fiqh, may Allah mercy upon them, when they're teaching or when they're studying the book of Tahara, then they study or the, they talk about first the Tahara al i.e. 
by the spiritual form of purification and its opposite is a ship. And also the study of wudu ablution and also al ghusl and also the study of tayammum and they also study those things which are impure and how a person should purify his body and the place and his clothing and also the different types of water and within the book of Tahara, they, they always mention the chapter of utensils. And this is because water, it is a liquid, it is a liquid, it's a pure form of liquid. And therefore this liquid has to be contained in something, i.e. a utensil. So because of this, they also study the chapter of utensils.